Hello everyone and welcome to a quick Project Spark tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be making overhead camera system. This is based on a room-like grid, kind of like in the old Legend of Zelda games. So, first things first, we've got this little world and we have our character. Now, I've already modified this character a little bit. I remove this character's camera, so this character has no camera. If you're going to be making a world like this, it may not be a good idea to have jump because it's kind of almost a 2D perspective, but that's up to you. First things first, we have our character out. We want to establish which way is north so we can keep that in mind. So I'm going to choose that way is north. And I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to grab this and rotate it over. Come on. There we go. So it's pointing north, just so I can remember. It's good to remember which way is north, just for your own personal reference. Next, we're going to grab a camera rig, like this. Camera gizmo, I think. And we're going to raise it up a lot, like more than you think you would need to. Maybe about there, something like that. Then, we need to rotate it downward at exactly... 270 degrees, I believe. Yep. So, just gonna guess, we're gonna place it right there. So, we're gonna go into this <clears throat> camera's brain. When in trigger zone, player, and now we're gonna make a child line, do camera, first person. Now we need to add a bunch of modifiers without controls, because we don't want them to be able to control these cameras, or else they kind of ruin the effect. We want to give it a transition, and I like, oh, ease between works pretty well. And this may not come up right away, but it's definitely good to have. Add a transition speed, I like one, but you can do less. You probably don't want to do more than one, or else it's a long transition. But the idea is that if you, uh, if you ever add teleportation, or something along those lines, It'll take one second to transition between this room and the other room that they're in, regardless how far those two rooms apart. So, now I think that's it on the brain side. Next, this is a little bit of the tedious, tricky part. We can kind of see by hovering over it what our camera sees. So, that's a good frame of reference. We're going to hit Edit, Properties brain sensors and turn trigger show trigger sensor to true now it'll give us this box we want to grab the handle that's right here and drop it straight down so you want it to I don't know go into the ground maybe a little bit give yourself some room you don't need it very tall uh, from here Maybe you want to drag it out to where you think a corner is going to be. And now we need to scale it out. So we're going to scale it out X quite a ways. Uh, that seems maybe about right. And then Y, we're going to scale it. So uh, I'm going to make sure that the player is pretty centered in this square. Now just for our frame of reference while we're making this, I'm going to put a logic cube in each corner. Now, we'll do something else with these logic cubes later, but just for now, we're going to place cubes in these corners. And it doesn't matter that they're logic cubes. I just like to use logic cubes as markers. Next, we'll go back to our camera. And it looks like our region is a little bit small. You know, it might almost be easier to line the uh, logic cubes up with the corners of your screen. Alright, so those logic cubes look about right, so let's try to line up with those cubes. Yeah, that looks good. So what we're going to do now is when you copy and paste this, uh, this rig, it won't show the trigger region. So what I do to make it simpler is I grab this logic cube and I scale it down to uh, 
about there. And then I place it on the inside, that's important, place it on the inside of the trigger region. Put one there. Put one there. One there. And the last one right here. Okay, so what I did is I gave markers to each of my corners. So I'm going to glue this whole rig together and copy and paste it. So multi-edit, I'm gonna to wanna to select one, two, three, four, and five. I think I got them. So glue objects. Looks like I got it. Might have to zoom in a little bit. Um, but now the idea is is you take these and you might want to make the squares a little bit bigger so you can see them you take this and you put these side by side these corners then you take these like that now this this bit is not an exact science trust me you can be somewhat inaccurate and it still works out there we go so I just put four of these down let's see if I got them to work perfectly so as you can see the camera doesn't move or follow me but when I exit the room it switches to the next room Because of the way that uh, forced perspective works, when you enter a room, it won't look like you're on the edge of the screen. But you do have to walk to the edge of the screen to exit the room. That's just one of the finicky things about 3D. So it looks like I could adjust my trigger region. Oh, wait, no, I'm at the top. Never mind. But it does look like I could adjust my trigger region to be a little bit shorter from the north side so it triggers a little sooner. But other than that, this looks pretty good. <clears throat> so, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.